In this lesson, we're going to learn about assets and bases, and I'm going to start by defining what is an asset, what is a base, and then also what is an alkali. Now, an, an acid is a substance that dissociates or ionizes in water to produce hydrogen ions. Now, there are three key phrases in the definition, the first of which is hydrogen ions. So an acid produces hydrogen ions and it, it is this hydrogen ions that gives acids the characteristics um, that we know of. So all acids contain hydrogen ions paired with another anion and the other anion can be inferred from the name. So what do I mean by that? For example, hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid contains hydrogen ions and chloride ions. So the formula for hydrochloric acid is HCl. All right, there are a few other acids, for example, sulfuric acid. So sulfuric acid contains hydrogen ions and from the name sulfuric, it suggests that it contains sulfate ions as well. So if you can recall, how do we obtain the formula of an ionic compound? Given the charge on the ions, we can simply do a cross multiplication and that will give us the formula of H2SO4 for sulfuric acid and then we also have acids like nitric acid so nitric acid contains again hydrogen ions and nitrate ions so the formula for nitric acid is HNO3 now the second keyword over here would be dissociate or ionize now, a common question that students would ask is can I uh, use them interchangeably or do they actually mean the same thing now um, using the case of using the example of hydrochloric acid in order for hydrochloric acid to produce hydrogen ions we must first break a HCl bond all right so the process of breaking up a, a compound is called dissociation all right so the compound breaks apart it dissociates to form h plus and cl minus and when it dissociates it actually forms ions so this process is called ionization so essentially they mean the same thing um, but they there's a slight difference dissociate means to break apart whereas ionize means to produce ions so essentially what is happening when hydrochloric acid forms hydrogen ions is that it will first break apart and in the process it forms ions so uh, they is same same but different we can actually use them interchangeably but they have slightly different meanings and the last keyword over here would be water all right for a substance for an acid to have acidic properties it must first dissolve or dissociate in water um, so for example if I were to dissolve hydrogen chloride in an organic solvent or a solvent that's not water it will not produce hydrogen ions and therefore it will not behave like an acid All right so to sum up again there are three keywords in the definition number one is hydrogen ions acids will produce hydrogen ions how do they produce hydrogen ions is when they dissociate they break apart in water so it must be soluble in water it must be dissolved in water before it can produce hydrogen ions and behave like an acid now here are some examples of some common acids we have hydrochloric acid nitric acid carbonic acid sulfuric acid phosphoric acid and the last one is called ethanoic acid okay ethanoic acid 
is something that I'm quite sure every one of us or most of us would have uh, consumed before this is actually your vinegar so as you can see all of these examples over here when they dissolve in water in aqueous form they actually dissociate they actually break apart to produce hydrogen ions and um, there's a slight difference between some of these examples for example if you look at hydrochloric acid and nitric acid versus carbonic acid and sulfuric acid the difference here is that one unit one unit of hydrochloric acid produces one unit of hydrogen ions whereas for carbonic acid one unit of carbonic acid will produce two units of hydrogen ions and if we go on to look at phosphoric acid one unit of phosphoric acid will produce three units of hydrogen ions now for acids where one unit of it produces one unit of hydrogen ions we give it a name we call it mono basic acids right for acids where one unit of the acid produces two units of hydrogen ions we call it a dibasic acid and then for an acid where one unit of the acid produces three units of hydrogen ions we call it a tri basic acid later on in one of the later lessons we're going to learn something interesting about di basic and tri basic acids so for now you just have to remember that acids can further be further classified into mono basic di basic and tri basic acids so based on what we've just learned, ethanoic acid over here, ethanoic acid is a mono basic acid. Now we'll go on to define what is a base. A base is any metal oxide or hydroxide that reacts with an acid to produce a salt and water only. Now before we go on to look at examples of bases, I just want to highlight that this definition is a very limited, it's a very narrow definition of the term base. All right? But it will serve you well in the context of O-levels. But at higher levels, um, there are examples that do not fit this definition, but they are still considered bases. All right. So for actually for acids and bases, there are multiple definitions out there. So when you go on to higher levels, you will learn that this may not be the most accurate definition of a base. However, in the, again, in the context of O levels, we will stick to this definition. A base is any metal oxide or hydroxide that reacts with acid to produce salt and water only. All right. So in the table below, we see a list of metal oxides and hydroxides all of them are bases all right now some of these bases can dissolve in water some of these bases cannot dissolve in water so how do we know which bases can dissolve in water which bases cannot you now have to remember this all metal oxides are insoluble in water all right except for except for SPA oxides what does SPA stand for? S stands for sodium P stands for potassium and A stands for ammonium alright for metal hydroxides all metal hydroxides are also insoluble in water except for SPCA hydroxides so what are SPCA hydroxides? SPA is exactly the same for metal oxide so it stands for sodium, potassium, ammonium what does C stand for? C stands for calcium so essentially calcium hydroxide is soluble in water 
but there's something special about calcium hydroxide is that it is only sparingly soluble what do I mean by sparingly soluble meaning um, when you add the solid in when you add solid calcium hydroxide in the water only a small amount of it will dissolve now as mentioned all metal oxides and hydroxides are bases some bases are soluble in water some bases are insoluble in water now bases that are soluble in water are called alkalis all right so the spca hydroxides they are alkalis they are considered alkalis so what exactly is an alkali an alkali is a soluble base which dissolves in water to produce hydroxide ions so the keyword here would be hydroxide ions again um, if you recall acids are substances that dissolve or dissociate in water to produce hydrogen ions and alkali is the opposite when it dissolves in water it produces hydroxide ions so if you can recall the amongst the metal hydroxides there are only four of them that are soluble which are your SPCA hydroxides again what does SPCA stands for? S stands for sodium so we have sodium hydroxide over here P stands for potassium so second one is potassium C stands for calcium and this is calcium hydroxide and then the last one would be ammonium but we don't exactly uh, call ammonium hydroxide ammonium hydroxide but rather we call it by the name of aqueous ammonia all right um, why why is that so we'll explain that in a later lecture so if you can see all the hydroxides over here when they dissolve in water they actually produce hydroxide ions the hydroxides are clearly visible in the chemical formula of the first three but however if you look at aqueous ammonia um, at first glance it doesn't seem to be an alkali because it doesn't contain a hydroxide but when you dissolve it in water it actually reacts with water to produce ammonium ions and hydroxide ions